What's shaking bacon? Today is the Monday before Thanksgiving. I just got back from the grocery store, got the rest of the things that I need for Thanksgiving meal, and it's time to start prepping. Maybe next year I'll get a Thanksgiving video up before Thanksgiving. And before a big holiday meal, I always try to prep a couple days ahead of time, and I like to split the prep up if I can. If I only get one day, like the day before, one day of prep is better than no days of prep. So today we are dealing with the turkey and we're cutting up things that I know I'm not gonna wanna cut up later this week to start. And we're just gonna bite off small chunks until Thursday. Have you ever seen that video where the kid is helping the dad with the turkey and he pulls out the neck and goes, it's a boy! Am I in the frame enough? I, I need to zoom out always dry off the bird if you've seen any of my meat cutting videos you know that this is a million percent necessary so i'm going to eight way my turkey i don't like roasting whole turkeys i don't even like roasting whole chickens each part of the bird cooks at a different rate and that's not something that i really want to deal with plus there's only i'm only feeding like three of us for thanksgiving this year the rest of my family will be visiting my cousins and my grandparents. So I, I don't even need the entire turkey. I broke down my first turkey last year and it's something that I'd wanted to do for a super long time. And so I finally got to do it because I was left in charge of the turkey and it was great. I did record myself doing that and uh, I might, if you're lucky, include some never before seen clips from that video. Can't be that different from a chicken. Just a big chicken. First thing we're gonna do, pull out the neck and this massive piece of ice that's still in there. Don't mind this thing. It's like a trussing mechanism that is frozen into the turkey. That video never made it to the internet. It was just a mess. It was definitely more of a learning project for me. Then I cut myself, which I almost never do. We're gonna cut this. Oh, well, that was smooth, Hannah. If you want to learn, how to break down a turkey, watch my how to break down a chicken video because it's exactly the same, just turkeys are bigger. Just a big chicken. And this is only like a 12 pound turkey, I think. Last year I broke down like a 16 pound turkey. So that one was even bigger. Chickens are certainly 100% easier. Exact same technique, they have the same anatomy, except Keep in mind, turkey bones are way sturdier than chicken bones. I'm only going to cook, I'm pretty sure, the thighs this year and maybe a breast just for some variety. Oh. Dang. Last year, I had such a hard time removing the back from the breast that I broke it in half. The neck and the back are going to be roasted in the oven and then I'm gonna make turkey stock overnight in the crock pot tonight. And then I'm going to use that turkey stock in gravy. And this is another good thing about doing this is that I don't have to wait until the turkey is done for the drippings and the juices from the cooked turkey. I'm just gonna make turkey stock so that I can make my gravy early. Cause I hate doing last minute anything. I get very overwhelmed very easily. So last year I just left this breast whole, but this year I think I'm only going to cook one of them. So I'm gonna take the keel bone out. I've never taken a keel bone out of a turkey. And uh, honestly, I'm just hoping I don't hurt myself. I never cut myself with a knife at work, but I did slice my fingers on bones often. I actually think the keel bone is still, is like actually attached to the ribs. <laughs> okay. Learning about turkey anatomy. Probably because turkeys are allowed to grow for way longer than chickens. Change of plan. We're gonna improvise. I've never removed poultry breasts like this, essentially backwards off the rib cage. I'm not showing you how to do anything in this video. I'm just taking you along for the ride. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Okay. Not the way I originally intended it, but we got one off. 
a semi janky way to get the breasts off the bone, but that's pretty clean. May have looked stupid, but it worked. I'm gonna take the tenderloin out, just removing some excess skin and fat, which I'm going to render down and then use the fat from that and the roux for the gravy. Now, the question is, can I get the disgusting tendon out of the tenderloin? This is why I don't like chicken tenders. The tendon that runs through these things is, mm -mm, it broke. Yep, that's just in there now. Be what it be. I didn't show you this in my chicken breakdown video, but for the tenderloin behind the breast of a chicken and a turkey, you can just pull it off. You don't have to cut it. There's a seam right there that it just is barely even holding on. Can I get the tendon out of this one? I should be wearing an apron. This is easier if you had like a towel. Something to grip this effort with. But I didn't get all of it, I got most of it. Love to see it. Should I bone out the thighs? I think I'm, I think, I think I will bone the thighs out. So the gizzards, I'm going to put aside elsewhere because I'm just gonna put those directly into the stock. I'm not gonna brown them first. You can, if you want. I'm, I'm just not going to. I'm gonna throw these into roast at like 400 degrees, maybe bump it up to 450 if it's taking too long until they're as brown as I want them. Because I'm only feeding three people on Thursday, I am packaging up and freezing the pieces of the turkey that I'm not going to be cooking. So it is dark now, as you can see. I had to take a break to make dinner and walk the dog, but the prep continues. I don't have any clean deli containers right now, so I'm just using repurposed jars. Hold all of my mirepoix. So last night when I was trying to grind out the rest of my prep list, my camera decided to wig out and I tried to fix it for an hour. I have no idea if I fixed it. I don't even know if the settings are right or what they were before. And then I got so frustrated that I finally decided to call it a night and I didn't finish my list yesterday. So it's time to hopefully get the list done today. Send good vibes. I'm going to start by getting the turkey dry brining. I'm just going to mix together some salt, some poultry seasoning, paprika, onion salt, and we're just going to hope for the best because I'm not basing this off of any ratios. I'm basing this purely off vibes. I'll throw in a little bit of sugar too. The turkey has already kind of started to dry out in the fridge overnight, which is fine. I mean, that's kind of what I was going for anyway. Just no flavor has been imbued into it yet. I hope this is enough. Last year I kept having to make more because the recipe I followed said that it would be enough for the size of turkey I had, and it surely was not. I wanted to get this done last night for maximum dry brining time, but at this point, this is maximum dry brining time. Before we bake it on Thursday, we're gonna rub it down with butter too. This one's looking a little bare, so I'm going to use Essence of Emerald, which is actually one of my top two favorite poultry seasonings of all time. I love this stuff. I also Love Emerald Lagasse, who doesn't though? I'm gonna be dry brining this until Thursday and today's Tuesday, so two days-ish of dry brine, which will be good. Last year, I think I only got two days or a day and a half. A lot of recipes you see will say like three, four days, but even a couple of hours is better than nothing. Into the fridge, this goes uncovered until Thursday. So, Due to unforeseen circumstances, it is once again dark. And I know I started today when it was light outside, that was this morning, and I am now only able to get to this now. And it's like 8 p.m. We're gonna knock out as much prep as we can before I just need to go to sleep, and it's gonna be fine. Not going to plan, it will all get done. We have a lot of chopping to do. I don't think I'm gonna do any cooking tonight. Oh, and it's raining. I do just wash mushrooms in water. They only absorb so much and I'm going to cook all the water out of them. So I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. 
Honestly, for someone who had a lot of knife skill testing done and then worked at a really froofy restaurant, my knife skills still suck. And my sizes are never even. Maybe one day, maybe one day. That day is just not today. And um, it works out for me just fine. We're gonna say that's enough. It's gonna be, it's gonna be enough. I hope. Yeah. Look at what last night's carrots have done to my cutting board. It's unfortunate. For green bean casserole, I do prefer fresh green beans, but frozen and canned are definitely easier. This is a choice that I made as an adult that I was going to use fresh green beans in green bean casserole. And so that's how I've been, been rolling the last few years. Even when it was just Xavier and I for holidays, I always make at least a double batch of green bean casserole because I could have just a meal of green bean casserole and be happy. Xavier singing Olivia Rodrigo, everybody. That was so funny. I love you so much. Yeah. For stuffing. I made my own stuffing for the first time like four years ago. And when I realized how easy it was to make, I didn't see a reason to buy a box of stuffing. And I like mine more, so. And for usually, I just use whatever sandwich bread we have, but we don't have enough sandwich bread. So I got, got a loaf, got a French loaf. Man. Hey, baby, can you do my flavor? Can you go into the closet, into a knife kit, and get me one of the serrated knives? Because this one is just not doing it for me. That was very sharp. Thank you. I mean, it's been used probably once. I should use this. <laughs> it's a Tournay knife. It is one of the most useless knives on the planet. It looks cool. It does look cool, but Tournay knives are quite literally, in my opinion, a big waste of material. As well as Tournays are a big waste of material. You know, I could have picked an easier bread. I was so overwhelmed at the store by this coin though. I had just picked one. How much stuffing is too much though? Like, is this whole loaf too much? Yeah. Okay. Is this enough onions? The one upside to not getting the onions from last night is them spending the night in the fridge means no crying when I cut them. Let's do one more onion. Ooh, it's gonna be too many onions for this container. The lid is not going to go back, is it? Oh. I think all I have left to do is Jalapenos. We just happen to have a fresh box of gloves. So I'm gonna use them. Because I have cut jalapenos before, thought I waited long enough and washed my hands well enough, and then touched my face. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. And since we have them, I'll use them. Most of the time, I don't go out of my way to use them. But that's purely out of laziness, not Practicality. How many of these do I think I need? So I asked my brother if he had any food uh, requests. I've been trying to remember the word requests for like five days. Anyway, if he had any food requests and he just said mac and cheese and I was like, okay, sure. And then he said, and if you want to throw some jalapenos in there, I wouldn't be mad. And I was like, oh, oh, we should do jalapeno popper mac and cheese. So that is what the plan is. So I lied, this is not the last thing I'm gonna cut up. I'm also gonna cut up some bacon. I'll do the pre-cooking tomorrow. That'll be a tomorrow thing. Except I might cook the green beans tonight. We'll see. I don't wanna cut the glove. That's like the biggest thing about wearing a glove while doing this is that 
I don't want to slice through the glove and then I have glove pieces in the food. I'll cut up two more, and then if we have extra, I'll send them home with my brother, and he can put them on things. Yep. Has been decided. I'll cut up two more. Okay. That's gonna be enough. And then... I'm gonna cut up... some bacon. I would do the potatoes, but I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'll do those tomorrow. Cut up potatoes tomorrow. Yep. I could also cook the bacon whole and crumble it. Hmm. What should I do? Because I can cut it up after it cooks. So I might just go ahead and cook it in the oven then. We're gonna do that. Eight pieces? I hope that's enough, because that's what I'm gonna, that's what we're making. Okay. Cutting. Cutting things. Finish. Only thing I have left to cut is potatoes. Tomorrow. Cool. Clean this up and since I have to wait for the bacon, I may as well blanch the green beans. Also, since the oven is on, we should toast the bread. Yeah. Could I have used a bigger sheet tray? Yes. Should I have? Probably. Avocado oil all over the bread. We need fat for even toasted. Or as even as I can get this on here. I thought about just putting the oil into the bag and shaking it like that, but then I didn't want the bag to be oily because I'm just gonna put these toasted back in that bag after they cool down. Camera's been so wiggy. If I didn't tell you earlier, last night I didn't get all of the prep done that I wanted because look, the camera just decided to glitch the heck out. It was freezing, like mid-record. I have never, never experienced that before. I barely know how to use this camera, to be honest with you. So I don't even know if the settings are right. I don't know, but um, yeah, it was very frustrating. I like to boil water in the electric kettle and then pour it in the pot because it boils so much faster in the kettle. And then I don't have to wait for it to boil on the stove. Reduce down the turkey stock for maximum flavor and minimum space in the fridge. Will it fit in that? I'm thinking it won't. Found a jar. That actually will definitely fit. I'll make gravy tomorrow. I'm gonna throw some ice in here to speed up the cooling down process. I reduced it down. I'm not worried about like watering it down with ice or anything. So it is Wednesday, day three of prep, final day. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and we have potatoes to mash and gravy to make and casserole to put together. Oh, and um, baking to do. Big day of cooking, so let's get cracking. Personally, I like to leave the skin on for mashed potatoes. I like lumpy mashed potatoes. Plus, if I don't have to peel the potato, that's one less thing that I have to do but Xavier likes smooth mashed potatoes and prefers no skin. And if it were me, I could really go without them. So I make mashed potatoes pretty much for him. So I'm gonna make them the way that he likes them. Am I cutting these potatoes really janky? Yes, I sure am. They'll cook evenly enough. They'll be mush, covered in butter anyway. It'll be fine. It probably would have been easier to mix together the soup and the milk and everything and then put the green beans in it. I realize this every time, every time, and I still do it backwards. Well, tell me I don't splash myself. Here, let's put on off. Uh, Xavier got me this apron a while ago, and I always forget to wear it, and then I destroy my shirts. Man, I love these. Mm. The dryer is done. Look at how domestic I look right now. The apron, the green, the, the casserole. That's so funny. I'm doing laundry? Impressive. To be honest, Xavier is way more domestic than I am. I just cook. He does, he does just about everything else. 
Oh, and I do dishes because he hates dishes. But like laundry, vacuuming, dusting. Yeah, that's all him. Yeah, okay. And then tomorrow before I bake it, I will put more onions on it. Oh, damn. What a great trash snack. I think this ricer was my Mima's, and I've never used it. We're gonna use it today to make super creamy mashed potatoes. Hope this is gonna be enough potatoes. I really don't wanna make more. I mean, there's three of us. There's so much food. This is gonna be enough potatoes. It's time to make some gravy. I thought I was filming that whole time. Oops. Well, mushrooms are cooking. All the water is almost cooked out of them. And I just finished the roux and added turkey stock to the turkey gravy and straight up was talking to the camera like it was on. Dang it. Look at how gelatinous the turkey stock is. Isn't that awesome? The mushroom gravy is, whoa, that lighting's weird looking. Whatever. The lighting, the quality of the picture is probably gonna be janky throughout this entire video. It be what it be. The mushroom gravy that I make is a play on my Mima's mushrooms. And I don't make it really anything like she did, but it tastes very similar. When you sprinkle flour onto vegetables that you've uh, browned or sauteed or whatever, and that's the basis of your thickening for something, that is called Sanjay. It is spelled like singer. And I remember when we were going over it in class, no one told us how it was pronounced because it's French or whatever. And so everyone in class was saying singer for the entire review. Our chef did not correct any of us. She just started talking and just said it properly. And the entire class went, oh. So at least all of us were collectively embarrassed. I think I'm going to need the rest of this turkey stock I love mushroom gravy. I'll make a big batch of it and just keep it in the fridge and eat it as like a snack on rice. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Come on, don't spill, don't spill, don't spill, don't spill. Oh yeah. Let that cool down. These crackers are stale and will be the breadcrumbs for the mac and cheese. This is mainly a way to use up stale crackers. I usually make a pumpkin roll. This year, I'm going to make the same recipe, but instead of rolling it up, I am going to turn it into a layered loaf instead. I'm just gonna make the filling right now and then make the cake in the morning because it's just a little too late to bake. This also would be easier if I used an electric mixer, but I don't feel like getting it out and then I don't feel like cleaning it. So I'm gonna try and strong arm this. Ugh. I'm gonna have to go get the mixer. I am going to do something a little bit different this year. This is rum infused butter that is from a video that we just recorded that will be out soon. And I'm going to use this in place of regular butter in the recipe. There's a little bit of rum in there. I'm gonna put that in there too. I want more rum flavor. Mm, that's good to the fridge until tomorrow. The camera keeps bugging out. Ah, it just completely shut off. That's a problem for later, as long as we can get through the rest of today. So I'm making the pumpkin, the cake portion of the, what is usually a pumpkin roll. We got this recipe from my cousin's husband's mom. We used to go to my aunt and uncle's house every Thanksgiving and she would always make this pumpkin roll and then a cranberry salad that we also usually have. I didn't make it this year because I didn't make it this year, but it's very tasty. Are these eggs room temp? No. Should they be? Technically, yeah. So in college, all of the culinary students are required to take two baking and pastry classes. So I took one my freshman year and one my sophomore year and I hated the first year. Uh, it's really just because my chef was awful, but I mean, we made a lot of cool stuff in that class. Um, we made a lot of bread. There was a lot of rolls. It was a lot of measuring. I don't follow recipes because I get nervous that I'm gonna forget something. So baking was always a little bit stress inducing for me. A couple years ago, I made a pie with an acorn squash that we just had. 
It was really good, but I winged that. So I've learned you can wing anything. I did a little research. Did the pie come out perfect? No. Did it crack? Yes. Would a little bit of bakery science fix that? Absolutely. But did it taste great? Yeah. My second year of baking and pastry, my advanced patisserie class, I loved that class. But that class was less about the actual baking and dessert making portion. It was actually way more about plating and learning how to plate and all of the necessary attributes of like a, like a well-balanced plate. And that class was super fun. Plus my chef was awesome. She was great. The recipe that we have doesn't really have a method of preparation. So I just do it in the order in which makes the most sense to me. Wet ingredients, sugar, then dry. I did pre-measure everything last night. I just didn't have the energy to bake it. The first time I made this, I think I was still in high school, but I remember looking at the recipe and being like, why are there no instructions on like what order to do any of this in? But I'm pretty sure this is a pretty foolproof recipe. So I, I don't think it's that it really needs to be that technical. Thanksgiving was always my favorite holiday as a kid. It still is. I love that Thanksgiving has all of the family and food aspects of Christmas without the stress of getting presents. I'm not a very timely person. The fact that I haven't finished or bought any Christmas presents for this year really does stress me out like a lot. So I love that Thanksgiving is just food and family and football. I love that. So unfortunately today, my commanders are playing the Dallas Cowboys. Not excited about the fact that we're playing on Thanksgiving. Not excited about the fact that we are probably going to be embarrassed, but it's okay. This season's a wash, but hey, Josh Harris, I'm thankful for you, man. Well, I'm not super duper excited about my commanders playing today. I am excited to watch the Lions play, and at least I have, at least I can root for the Lions today, and they have a shot at winning. We really, we really kind of don't. Who plays tonight tonight? Pretty sure it's the Niners, but I can't remember who they play. Oh, it's the Niners and the Seahawks. Okay, I hope the Niners win that game. The Seahawks, mm, we played them two weeks ago, okay? That game was so incredibly winnable for us, and um, we lost. I don't even want to talk about getting swept by the Giants this year. That's embarrassing within itself. The loss to the Seahawks wasn't embarrassing. It was just more annoying than anything. I never particularly disliked the Seahawks, and I've decided that now I do. Something icky about them, to be honest with you, in my opinion. To each their own, though. To each their own. Pete Carroll seems like a cool guy. The fact that he's the oldest coach and also, like, the most energetic one. Obviously, I've got a lot of respect for him. But I don't know. There's something just icky about most of their players. I don't have anything about, against, like, Geno Smith. I hope... I hope he succeeds, especially because so many people, you know, have dogged on him for so many years. I would like Gina to succeed. It's an oxymoron. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's like how I don't really like the Ravens, but I like Lamar Jackson and I hope he succeeds. I just don't want the team to succeed. I'm not saying it makes sense. We traded Chase Young to the Niners, you know, at the end of October. He's going to do great there. He's been doing well there. You know, the difference that Coach Will makes is immense. I got a notification today essentially telling all Commanders fans that Josh Harris isn't going to fire Ron Rivera until the end of the season, which is fine. I don't really care. Firing him now really won't do anything for us. The season's already a wash. I feel bad for all of our players. We'll hit that upward stride, you know. Well, we'll, we'll get to the top soon, I think. But I've thought that my entire life, so... You gotta stay optimistic when you're a fan of a bad team. You do. Or else, <laughs> or else you got nothing. I've tried to become emotionally invested in other teams and I really just can't. I mean, I'm emotionally invested in the Lions now, but not, not anything close to how much emotional energy I've put into the Washington franchise in my life. So if they're bad for the rest of eternity, if they're bad for my whole life, I'm still here. I'm still... I'm still just here. Who do the Lions even play today? I don't even remember. Oh, the Packers? Oh, it's family business, isn't it? So, I mean, yeah. Is all of it family business today? Yo, everything is family business today. Oh, these games are all gonna be good then, I hope. Our game, okay, family business is different. Divisional games are different. I think because we're in the same division as the Cowboys, it should be competitive. 
Most of the time these games are competitive. Sam beat them last year. We've got nothing to lose. We've got nothing to play for, so we should actually play pretty well today. I could be completely jinxing us though. I got invited to a game though, my first one. I've never been to, I've never been to an NFL game before. When I was in college, my dorm was right next to the Carolina Panthers practice field when they were still, when their practice field was still in Charlotte. And my dorm also looked at the stadium, the Panthers stadium. So during home games, I could open my window and I could hear the stadium and watch it on the TV. So I had the coolest room my freshman year of college, but I never went to a game. And then I've never been to a game at FedEx. FedEx is like an hour from where I grew up. It's kind of a dump if you know anything about it. It's, I think, the worst stadium in the league. So the unknown stresses me out. It gives me anxiety, you know. But I got invited to a game by my brother-in-law. I'm so excited. We'll most likely lose that game. We're playing the Dolphins. We're gonna probably lose. My brother-in-law is a Dolphins fan, so it's it might get ugly. It might. But I also might cry because I'm so excited. I should clean up. I'll meet you back here when the cake is done. That worked actually really well. I thought this would be less messy. It might be just as messy. Oh, it ripped. When you make this into a pumpkin roll, you're supposed to absolutely douse it with powdered sugar to keep it from sticking and then roll it up in a towel and let it cool in that rolled state so it rolls back up. So I think the fact that one, it's not completely cooled, and since I didn't douse it in powdered sugar, it's really, really wet. So, you know, these are all good pieces of information for the next time I try to do this. May not be the prettiest, but it'll taste good. You know, for eyeballing all of these, I'm really impressed with myself for how even all of these were. It's not nearly as cute as I thought it would be. Yeah, the lighting is just gonna be garbage for this portion. Grabbing it with butter, grabbing, grabbing the turkey down with butter. I don't know what temperature I'm gonna cook this at. That's probably a problem. We're gonna make the stuffing because it's easy to keep warm. And then we're gonna make the mac and cheese, the green bean casseroles in the oven, and then I'll put the turkey in the oven. I forgot the rice, oh my God. Let's go, Lions. Come on. How much is too much mirepoix? Since I don't know what that is, I'm going to assume it's disrespect. <laughs> and because I don't know what they mean, I'm going to take them as disrespect. <laughs> go, David. Yeah, throw oh. it to my guy. All on breezy, say breeze. <laughs> Oh my god! What? We had to set a timer because I was gonna forget. That's what I did. Yeah. 